You know, when I went to the Adobe Max convention, I was talking to one of the product managers for Photoshop, and he told me that they were thinking of replacing the filter gallery with some sort of AI filter gallery instead, and then doing away with the old or the current filter gallery. And I almost strapped C4 to my chest when I heard that they can never, never take away my precious filter gallery. I won't let them. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jerome with JeromeSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. You might notice I'm in a new little room here, new little office space. I'm gonna get more into that in the next videos that come out on this channel. But basically I moved and I'm still in the process of setting up this whole room, this whole new office space for me and my videos. So the lighting and the camera and all that isn't perfect. So you're gonna have to forgive me. But either way, I'm really excited to show you guys this new space that I'm in. Let's quickly take a look at four ways you could use the filter gallery in Photoshop to get more of a graphic or illustrated look on your images. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop right now. I got my setup here of all the four image treatment that I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. But for these effects to work, like how I've set this up, you wanna make sure the first thing you do is have your document DPI set at 300. This higher resolution allows for more of a quality artwork. So I have my document set up at 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI, as I always do. This is the classic document size that I use. If you want, you can copy these settings or you can use whatever width and height you want for your document. But just make sure that resolution is on 300 DPI. So this is the sample image that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go through the filter gallery stack for all four of these image treatments so that you can steal this exact same setup and get these effects on your images. You'll also notice I got some coloring and texturing going on here to supplement that effect. Obviously would highly recommend doing something like that as well to bring the artwork together. So I'm gonna break down the coloring and the texturing of this in just a little bit. But let's check out the first image treatment we have here. So this is a tried and true effect. Obviously everybody knows the halftone, but using the filter gallery can get us this really cool overblown look with those halftones and grants us a lot of control with the actual effect with how I set it up. So to do this, convert your image layer to a smart object. Mine already is a smart object, but all you do is right click your layer and convert to a smart object right here. And then you go to filter, filter gallery. I already have the filter gallery effects on this smart object. So I'm actually just gonna open that up and break down each of the effects one by one. So once you have the filter gallery open on your image, you're gonna be left with this blank slate, but we're gonna add some effects onto this. The first of which is the halftone pattern, which is in the sketch folder. So go ahead and click on that effect in the sketch folder to get that onto your image. I like having the size of this all the way up. That gets us that really cool overblown look, but obviously you can feel free to play with the size of the effect here. I'm gonna turn this all the way up. And for the contrast, you might think you wanna turn this all the way up to get these halftones ingrained on your image. But that's actually not what we want to do. We want to put that more in the mid range and that's going to give us more control over the effect later on when we add the torn edges and the stamp effect. So after you slap this halftone pattern effect onto the image, you're going to want to add a torn edges effect into the filter gallery stack. You can do that just by clicking on this little plus button down here. That's going to create a new filter for you on top of your previous filter. And for that new filter, you're going to want to choose torn edges, which is also in sketch. And this filter is what we're gonna to use to control the intensity of the halftone. You wanna make sure the smoothness on this effect is all the way up. And the contrast you could play with, it's not really gonna change much besides add some grain or extra texture to your image. But I like having it at a point where you don't get any of that extra noise or texture. But if you like, of course, feel free to turn this down or up depending on your preferences. I'm gonna keep this around the mid range. I wanna keep these blacks just pure black because I'm gonna add my own texture onto it later. And then finally, you can use the image balance slider here to control the intensity of the effect and the brightness of your image. And this is why we left the contrast slider in the halftone pattern effect down in the low to mid range, because once we start using the torn edges filter, we get a lot more control over the brightness and the intensity of the effect, rather than just turning up the contrast slider all the way in the halftone pattern effect. So this makes tuning up this effect and pretty much the brightness of your image super easy. And last but not least for this little stack here, we have the stamp filter which is stacked on top of the torn edges and halftone pattern. And that's also in the sketch folder. This filter is honestly optional. Uh, you could just play with the smoothness slider on this to sort of blend the halftones more if you like that effect. Kind of get them bleeding into each other like you see here. The more you turn the smoothness up, the more that's gonna happen. So that's a pretty cool effect that I like to add onto this halftone look is the stamp filter with the smoothness around the low to mid range. And the light dark balance doesn't really do anything so you don't really need to play with that and that is the first treatment before i get into any of the others i'm going to explain the color and texture layers that i've got going on here very simple stuff so for the color of this i've just got two colorful layers set to the colors that i want to use on this graphic here and they're both set to darken which is going to affect only the whites or the light parts 
of the layers below it. I have the orange colorful layer masked to just the face of the subject and the yellow colorful mask to just the background to get us that really cool color contrast, sort of a pop art look, which is really, really cool. And then for the textures, it's literally just one of the textures from my printer noise texture kit. And I set that layer to lighten to affect only the black parts of the layers below it. Printer noise is a texture kit full of over a hundred high res, crispy paper and scan textures that you can use in your artworks just like this. You can pick that up on my site if you'd like to ronsupply.com for 15% off using the code YouTube 15. So again, super simple setup for the color and texture here, but it complements the below effects and image treatments very, very well. So feel free to steal this whole setup here. It brings the underlying effects together really nicely. Now on to the second image treatment here. You already know where to go. Obviously make your image a smart object and go to filter, filter gallery. I'm gonna open up the effects for this right here. And this is actually just the exact same setup as the last one that I just showed you. The only thing that we changed is the pattern type in the halftone pattern effect right here. So we changed the pattern type from dot to line. We can also change that to circle if you want. That's also a really cool effect that gets you sort of like a spiral like halftone on your image. Really, really cool. And then again, you can go into the torn edges to mess with the brightness of your image using image balance or the blending of the effect using the smoothness slider on the stamp filter here. So again, same setup as the last time. The only thing we changed is the pattern type right here. You may have already known about changing the pattern type to get these really cool, unique halftones on your image here, but the real sauce is the rest of the setup that we got going on here. Really lets us control and fine tune this effect to our liking and really streamlines that effect. So you definitely wanna give this a shot. Okay, let's take a look at the third effect here. This one is really, really cool. It's a super fun illustrated or comic type effect that you can add onto your image. Let's go right ahead and dive into the filter gallery effect stack here. So I'm gonna open up the filter gallery and show you each of the filters that I have on this image. The first one we have is a diffuse glow. This is in the distort folder in the filter gallery. I like turning the graininess up pretty high and then the glow and clear amount somewhere in the middle range, but you can come back to this later after we add the rest of the effects to play with the glow and the clear amount, which sort of affects the brightness of your image. That's mostly what this is here for, to have sort of more control over the brightness of your image. For this specific effect, you do want to brighten your image up quite a bit, and this will do that for you. And it also adds a super nice and soft glow to your image, and that's gonna help blend things together as well as we add the rest of the effects on this. So the next effect we have is this poster edges effect that's in the artistic folder of the filter gallery. I like having the posterization all the way down at zero. You could turn this anywhere from zero to three depending on your preference, but for more of that comic look, I really like keeping the posterization down at zero. The edge thickness and edge intensity, however, we wanna keep it pretty much all the way up. And then on top of this effect, we wanna add a torn edges effect, which is again in the sketch folder of the filter gallery. And this is gonna help blend the entire effect together pretty nicely. Again, you wanna keep the smoothness ladder all the way up on this torn edges effect and the contrast pretty much anywhere you want it, but I like to keep it in this mid range so that we have those pure blacks in our design. And then the image balance, again, you just use to sort of control the brightness or intensity of the effect. For this specific comic look, I like keeping this pretty low, but again, this is going to depend on your image. So another pretty simple setup we have here, and it gets us that really cool comic look on our image. And when I pair that with the coloring and the texturing, we just get this beautiful sort of pop art or dramatic look on our graphic. Okay, and now for the last filter gallery treatment, this one's got a bit more body, but it's really, really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the filter gallery effects here to show you the filter stack that I'm using. So we got four effects going on this image this time, but we're starting off with the accented edges effect. This is in the brush strokes folder of the filter gallery. You basically want the smoothness pretty much all the way up and the edge brightness at a point where you can start to see it take precedence in the image here. And then the edge width at sort of a moderate size that's not really overpowering the effect and the subject of our image. And then on top of that, we wanna add an ocean ripple effect. This is in the distort folder. And this is really an unconventional effect and I don't really see it get used often at all, but it ends up looking really, really cool. And I'm not gonna give you any preset settings for this because this is more of an experimental look. So you can really just play around with this to your liking. I have the ripple size all the way up and the magnitude about midway. And then on top of this ocean ripple effect, we have the graphic pen effect from the sketch folder. And this is really where the effect starts to come together. It sort of feels like a mixed media look or I don't really know, but it's a cool effect. Feel free to play with these settings as well as it's going to depend on your image, but generally keep the stroke length at low to mid range and use the light slash dark balance slider to play with the brightness of your image and the intensity of the effect. This is optional, but you can throw on a torn edges effect on top of all this to sort of tighten up the image and the effect. I'm just gonna add a little bit more contrast 
and tighten up some areas of the image. You're gonna wanna play with these settings here until you find something you like. Just keep the smoothness all the way on 15. And that's it for the final treatment. I really, really like how the ocean ripple effect sort of gets us that brushed or smudged mixed media effect on our image. And when I pair that with the graphic pen effect and torn edges, it really creates a cool effect on this image here. It also looks really cool without the coloring or even without the texturing, but you know I like to add my texture. And that's a wrap. So that's four image treatments that you can use to liven up your designs using just the filter gallery in Photoshop. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss next week's tutorial where I'll show you how to create this really, really cool VHS text effect. I hope you learned something from this video. If you want to add the best set of textures to your texture library, go ahead and pick up the printer noise texture kit available on my website. And you can get 15% off by using the code YouTube15. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.